Hey guys, and welcome back. It's Grant Proji from The Strength Co. And today I wanna to talk about what type of barbell should I buy? Well, not me, what type of barbell should you buy? If you like the video, like and subscribe to the channel. If you're shopping for a barbell, there are a lot of options out there, and I mean a lot. It can almost get overwhelming for something that seemingly seems so simple. But I have it on good authority and as a good educated guest that you're shopping or watching on thestrength.co because you're after Made in USA products, so you're at the right place. However, even on my site, when you land on the barbell page, you see that you have options. So I'm gonna use our barbells as an example to tell you what you should be looking for. Before we break down the different barbells you see on our site, I do wanna say that there is some difference in buying a quality barbell, and, and I mean that. For example, our plates are made with an inner diameter of 1.99 inches. That is the smallest opening on a plate that is in existence, which means that you need a quality bar for these to fit. Having sold and shipped a million pounds worth of cast iron plates, what I can tell you is that our plates will fit most bars, almost every bar. But from time to time, and I mean maybe 10 times in three years, we have had people where the plate will not fit on the bar. And the issue every single time has been that their bar is out of spec. The industry standard for the sleeve of your barbell is 1.95 inches. We have found some weeder bars and some cap bars that are, dare I say it, made in China have an issue and the plate then won't fit. I'm not saying that other bars don't exist from other countries that are quality, they are. But I'm telling you, when you buy Made in USA barbells, that's one problem you're gonna solve. So using our own store as an example, let's jump onto our page and look at some barbells. Okay, so you land on the page and it's really pretty simple. You see a Simplify bar that's $500. You see a Core Olympic Power Bar is $325. Another standard Olympic barbell that's $325 dollars they're all the same weight there's a 33 pounder here that's a little bit cheaper and a loadable dumbbell sold out well it's not sold out it's coming back very soon so first of all let's talk the weight of the bar if you are getting started in barbell training and you are a male you can start with a 45 pound bar and most females can start with a 45 pound bar however if you're going to press and you're going to bench press and you are a female or a male or an older male or an older female and you're very detrained, the difference between 33 pounds and 45 pounds is a lot. So if you're training for general strength training and you're just getting started and you know you're weak, you might need a 33 pound bar. Our 33 pound bar named the Audrey bar after my mother, love you mom, is what's called a female Olympic bar. Remember in the last video, the powerlifting one, we talked about the difference between powerlifting and Olympic weightlifting. So this is a women's Olympic barbell it's 33 pounds and i named it after my mom because when my mom started lifting she needed a lighter bar and so we decided to make one all the same quality and characteristics we have with our other barbells the difference with this women's bar is not only is it lighter it's also thinner the diameter is thinner so it's 25 millimeters so if you're a woman and you're into olympic weightlifting this bar's for you if you're just getting started and need a lighter bar this bar's for you now, assuming that's not you, and you're a male or a female, but you're looking for a 45 pound bar or a 20 kilogram bar, which is the standard barbell weight, um, you are going to want a standard Olympic barbell. That is the term that is used, meaning that it fits two inch, or in our case, 1.99 inches diameter, plates on the sleeves. We've done a video before on barbell coatings. You should watch that video if you wanna learn the intricacies of the different types of coatings and which one's for you. The barbell behind me is the first barbell I ever bought, so I keep it for the sentimental value, my first barbell. And as you look at it, you can tell that it has patina. We have to play patina. Make Ripitos say patina. They will develop a nice patina. Okay, good. Anyway, a bare steel bar will change colors over time. It's fine, but it does change colors. It does require some maintenance, needs to be oiled, needs to be lubricated, needs to be you know brushed off when the when a little bit of rust forms, that sort of thing. That's why it sits here and I don't train with it. It's just for aesthetics. All of the barbells that we sell are coated. Again, watch the video and you'll know why. It's to make it so that you don't have to do a bunch of maintenance on the bar. So let's first start with the Simplify bar. So if you look at the Simplify bar, the first thing that probably jumps out to you is that it costs the most. It's $500. And that is because one, it's Cerakote. The other two bars or all the other bars we sell are zinc coated. This is a Cerakote finish. Uh, and it has this American flag pattern, which means more manual labor. And for every bar that this that we sell, we give $100 to the Semper Fi Fund, uh, a great organization for veterans and things like that. So that is why the Semper Fi bar is more than the other two. 
The Semper Fi bar is actually the same bar as our standard Olympic barbell. And I call it a standard Olympic barbell because that's what you people type into Google when you're looking for barbells. I think the standard Olympic barbell is the most general purpose bar that you could own. If you're getting started, if your wife lifts as well, if you only wanna own one barbell, yes, there are people out there that own lots and lots and lots of barbells, and some of them are named Brandon. But if you wanna own one bar, I kind of recommend this one. It's 28 and a half millimeters in diameter, so it's just a little bit thinner than a 29 millimeter bar, which kind of makes a difference if you're a dude with smaller hands or a female, and the thinner the bar, it can be easier to grip. It also has dual hash marks, so you're gonna see the Olympic hash mark and the powerlifting hash mark. Probably doesn't matter if you compete. I kinda like to, because really most people, if they're not competing, just use them for reference points, and so now you have two reference points, I think it can be useful. Um, it's a bushing bar, it's not gonna need really any maintenance. You might have to oil in here, um, and, and the bushings maybe every six months. The knurling pattern is aggressive, but it's not gonna tear your hands apart. And even big guys like this, Big Dan Bell, greatest of all time, can pull super heavy on it. Um, there's a video on barbell coating, I think this is probably the best bar for the general purpose lifter. Okay, so now let's take a look at the core bar. And you're probably saying to yourself, Grant, you just sold me on the standard bar, or actually I want the simplified bar, red, white, and blue, hell yeah, brother. No, but let's look at the core bar and talk about what you might like. The core bar is our variation of a power bar. And a power bar just means 29 millimeters in diameter, um, and it's gonna have a more aggressive knurling. Let's talk about what you, the normal everyday lifter person, is going to feel with a difference in diameter. One, I already cover it. How can you grip the bar? Does your hand fit around it, etc.? If you have small hands, 20 and a half might be better. But the other thing is, how does the knurling feel in your hands? If you've ever used a cheap bar in a commercial gym, it's almost like smooth, it's like butter. And if you're squatting, it can slide down your back. If you're trying to deadlift, it's almost impossible to grip. Uh, I forgot where I was recently during our Gyms Across America tour, but I pulled with straps because the knurling was so bad. So you want some type of knurling so that you can grip the barbell, or in the case of the back squat, the bar can kind of grip you or grip your shirt. Watch our videos on the best types of shirts to squat in, by the way. So you need knurling to grip. The crazy part is some people like different levels of abuse. Some people want it really, really aggressive. They want the aggressive knurl. This R core bar provides a more aggressive knurl. I find it still to be bearable. I deadlift with this bar all the time, um, but it is gonna be more aggressive than the standard one. Uh, I'm not saying that men and women are different. I'm not saying that, no, they are different. And so, uh, most of the time women kind of prefer uh, the standard bar when they're deadlifting because it's not quite as hard on the hands. As far as will you notice the difference in diameter, the answer is yes. I pull and squat on both the core bar, the simplify bar, or the standard bar, they're the same bar, just different coatings. And you can notice a difference. In the bottom of a squat, the thicker that shaft, that diameter is, the less whip you're going to have. If you're just getting started and you're squatting 135 pounds, you're not gonna notice the whip on the bar. But if you're strong, and, and not that strong, I mean like, you know, you're doing over 300 pounds, you will feel the difference of the bar in the bottom of the squat. Or if you're big Jonathan Oldham and you're doing 785 pounds, you're definitely gonna feel the difference between a 28 and a half millimeter bar and a 29 millimeter bar. So the thicker bar in the bottom of the squat, less whip, and then when you're deadlifting, the 28 and a half millimeter bar is going to flex more. This is why people like 27 millimeter deadlift bars because the bar flexes more, so there's more bend, the more weight that's on the bar, and therefore you have to pull the bar less height. It's not bad, it's a great thing. I've pulled on them before, it's totally fine. I'm just telling you the difference so you can make an educated buy. We are trying to find a solution for a deadlift bar. We're still working on that, stay tuned. One thing I will say, when I tr coach people, for powerlifting meets, I generally have them pull almost only on a 28 and a half or a 29 millimeter bar. That way on meet day, when they get that thinner bar that's gonna have more flex, it can add a few pounds to the bar and make their deadlift go up and you know they place better in the meet. So again, this is a basic video on the barbell differences that we sell. You have weight that you're gonna look at, you have coating that you're gonna look at, you have bushings versus bearings. I don't really think you need to nerd out on that if you're just doing the basic barbell lifts. You have center neural versus no center neural. We didn't cover that, but all of our bars, except for our women's bar, have a center neural. I think that's useful. It's not in the way in the deadlift, and or even if you're power cleaning or snatching, and it's useful in the squat to grip your shirt. 29 millimeter core bar is gonna be a little bit more rigid, have a little bit more aggressive knurling. 
The Semper Fi bar and the standard bar, same knurling pattern, same diameter, the differences in the coating alone, all of them, very little maintenance. Now you know something about Barbell. Go check out on the store. Yeah, but, but if you like the video, like and subscribe to the channel. We'll see you next time.